Hey everyone, Rick with Rick's 135th scale models with a product review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Ming 135th scale Leopard 2A4. Uh, this is a 2020 kit produced by Ming and I wanted to talk about the product itself and the options, the quality and things like that. So let's get started. So initially you're going to have the instruction sheet. It's a uh, stereotypical Ming instruction. You have your different languages. Um, you'll have lots of different options depending on which country you're looking at. A uh, little bit of background on the vehicle, uh, fairly accurate information. Uh, kind of goes through helping you understand what you're dealing with. And after several pages of that, you'll get to the instructions. Now initially they'll give you your basic building your model type stuff you need to know which if you've built a couple models you're pretty familiar with and then they start with building the lower hull area and they start with the bogey wheels and then all the suspension system. Um, all this is straightforward if you've built any other uh, Ming Leopards it looks pretty identical uh, they have the little plastic nubs that pop on so that the uh, wheels can pop on and off which is a nice feature. Um, they also have uh, on you can see the caps which are on here which you can either have or don't have move depending on how you put it together. It also has uh, movable suspension which if you're doing a diorama is a nice feature. Uh, overall though you've got to really make sure as you build it that it's all lined up properly or you'll have it all kittywampus. Um, they have a couple of jigs to put different parts on which is a nice feature. Um, when building it make sure though that you don't glue this jig on by mistake when you're gluing these little support spars or you'll uh, definitely not be happy with life. Um, tracks are a multi-stage um, track setup that Ming is pretty predictable at doing. They go together pretty simple. Um, one of the things to pay attention, they don't tell you in it, but if you see it in the decal or in the instructions here is you don't want to break this part off. It helps line it up and then um, after you glue this together or just pop it in and hope it holds, which is how they tell you to do it, then you can um, break it off after that. And continuing on through, you have multiple options here and they kind of explain, not real good, but you can kind of see, you can do this side skirt um, down here, or you can do this uh, other version here, depending on which country you're doing and uh, which version of the vehicle. And then you work your way into the turret. Now the nice thing about this model versus a lot of other A4s out there, um, the tube is... Um, you can change the elevation on it, which is a nice feature. Um, also, all of the periscopes are clear plastic, which is another nice feature uh, for building it a little more realistic looking. Um, also, the uh, different items, the periscope, etc., they're all really well detailed, so it's a real nice quality there. Um, going through, you can also do the uh, simulator function. Now, they don't have the simulator that you can add on for the laser sensors, but you do have the simulator here. Um, and then the uh, strobe light depending on when you're doing convoy and things like that. So that's the uh, basic instructions, not real involved, no uh, interior this model. Uh, One of the other nice features about this kit is they give you a paint sheet which talks about the different paint patterns you want to do. Now whenever doing the uh, NATO version of all these vehicles, the paint scheme is pretty predictable and it's all they're all the same. So you want to make sure that this is an accurate depiction of the uh, era of the A4 you're building and then you want to follow that pretty much to the letter. And they also talk about where you put your decals and uh, the different paint things you do. The back side of this is um, just a uh, reference guide to a different couple of different brands of paint that they talk about. Now going through the spruce sheets, the initial lower hull comes in uh, two pieces and then you have this part which you have to break off which is part of the uh, cover over the engine. The neat thing about the mean kit is if you want to build a kit with this all open and either scratch build the interior of the engine compartment or buy some of the aftermarket resin products that are out there you can do that. The other nice thing about it is all the uh, anti-skid plates are really close to the vehicle. They don't look too thick. They're real accurate looking. You also have uh, real good weld lines and um, 
the different nuts and bolts that you can see on different plating. They're all really well detailed. You have your fuel things. The only thing I would criticize is that um, your access points that have little handles on them are just a piece of plastic popped up, but that's something you can easily cut off and add an actual handle to make it look more realistic. Looking at the clear plastic sheet, you've got your headlights, your different periscopes, your sighting system, um, and then some other components there that are clear, your headlights, taillights, all those things. Uh, real nice clear plastic, you can uh, put it in like this or do some simple painting on the inside of it to get the shiny look to kind of create a more accurate fixture, but it's a good nice base. The bogey wheels come in two separate sprue sheets. You've got uh, the different components. Um, what's nice is they've got really good nice detail on the inside of the uh, bolt and then you've got your caps that go on the outside uh, inside the rubber tread the patterns and all that are real nice. Pretty simple cleanup not a lot of uh, flashing or anything like that and the way they connect them makes it really uh, pretty straightforward. The next sprue sheet will be your uh, lower chassis um, axles and some different uh, support hubs and things like that. You have two of this um, but as you can see you have the uh, torsion bar here and then your uh, axle and then some uh, extra support that goes on the outside. On top of that you have your little spaldings as it were a, a supplement they added to stiffen up the back end where the engine is mounted. And you have your drive sprocket, um, some of your cooling fan components there and uh, shovels, things like that. Yeah, the other nice thing I like about the Ming kit is the uh, lift hooks on the turret aren't overly sized. They're pretty accurate looking and uh, they don't look uh, overly large like some of the other models out there. So this is going to be another sprue sheet which is parts of your lower chassis. Uh, you have your back plate, your rear fenders, the front fender, uh, parts of the uh, armor plating on the front. Now the nice thing is, is you can make this open or closed. Um, open if you're putting it on a train, um, closed if it's going into the field. Uh, they also have uh, some of your uh, ice cleats and then some of the parts for the uh, engine. More parts of the lower hull. Um, as I said before, you have options of this side skirt or this side skirt, depending on which version of this you're building and which era parts of the engine uh, deck. Like I said, this is neat because you can actually take it off or flip it up and have it open. Um, your driver's hatch and then uh, some other parts of the turret are listed here. Uh, real good detail. Like I said, once again, you can see the uh, non-skid plating here uh, and here. Uh, those are basically stickers that they put on that um, or like a sandpaper type product. So uh, they're not too thick. They look nice, but yet they're thick enough to where you can actually notice them. Really nice detail there. On top of the uh, bolts all here are really accurately looking. This proof sheet's going to show your uh, smoke dischargers, part of your uh, extra equipment, your MG machine guns. You have two options. You have one with a buttstock, one without. Uh, the tools you use, parts of the turret, uh, hatches, um, the round simulator, and then um, some more components for the uh, lift jack, um, antennas, and uh, your beacon there, your headlights, uh, pretty good detail, nice. There's no flashing on here, uh, really easy to clean up and make look sharp. On top of that, the uh, seam on the sides is real crisp and uh, you don't have to worry about a lot of uh, sanding there to make it look nice. Here's going to be parts of your turret, your main gun, the bottom side of your turret. What I like about this kit is they have all the details on the underside of the turret. I mean, this is something you're really not going to be able to see, but yet they've got all the details, the weld lines, the, the seams, uh, little access points, um, different parts there. They have all that detail. On top of that, you have uh, some of your different hooks, devices, uh, gun mantle, um, part of your hosing system for your... Uh, simulator that goes over the main gun and then different sights components and parts there all these have real good detail looking at accurate pictures of the real vehicle these look real accurate real nice uh, sharp and uh, definitely a good job on that part this is going to be the track there's three of these um, you've got the top part the part that sits on the ground and then the rod that uh, slides into the uh, long tube and then they uh, bolt it down to hold it all together. On top of that they give you a jig here to build this all 
up. Now the biggest thing, like I said before, is remember is you want to cut this over here off and then you want to gently pop these off on this side, not breaking into these delicate parts. And then when you put it on, that's already pre-spaced, so it's a lot easier to assemble. And if you do it this way, uh, you can knock out a track in a fairly quick time versus taking it all apart. It'll take you uh, substantially longer. So here you're going to have some rubber components, your uh, gun mantle cover, um, some different rubber parts here, and then these are all your little holders of the um, bogey wheels that keep them locked on the vehicle itself for the model, but it makes it nicer. You can pop them on and off if you need be. You're going to have your PE sheet. Um, not a lot of uh, parts here to deal with, but um, they do have a few. You've got your cover, uh, and here are some chain hooks, um, some of the different uh, grills and uh, fan setups that are there. And nice if you have your uh, rear view mirrors on the up position, they have little uh, reflectivized um, stickers you can put in there to make them look realistic. And then they have a uh, wire here that's braided to uh, simulate your tow chain or tow cable. And then you have your decals uh, here. They've got a couple different versions of the Leopard here. Um, only German decals that I can see but you know with a little bit of work you can easily build the other variants of this that other countries may do. Canada, uh, some of the other countries that use the A4 and uh, last part will be the turret. Um, this is a really nice well detailed part of the model. It's something obviously you're going to be looking at a lot of. Um, all the non-skid plating is uh, really good detail, real uh, subtle but yet uh, noticeable. Um, you've got all your uh, bolts here for your uh, blow-off plate for the ammunition container, your sight, your sight for the commander, your hatches, all the points where your uh, periscopes come up, and then your uh, front sight, uh, real well detailed in there. So in summary, uh, this is a great kit. The inside of the turret actually shows a date of 2015. My instructions on this show 2020, um, but it's definitely one of Bing's older kits but it's still a really nice kit. Um, compared to the other products out there in the 135th scale, I, you know, it's everybody has their opinion. I think this is probably going to be one of your nicer kits. Uh, it's really good quality. It fits really good. Um, it gives you lots of options. Uh, the quality, I mean, it says for itself. A lot of people kind of get on Ming for different issues. Um, there are some delicate parts to it, but you know, for out there for a leopard, uh, it's definitely worth it. It is a harder kit to find that you do still see it in model shops, but um, it's more on the pricey side where you know your standard uh, leopards are going for anywhere from $35 to $65 US. Uh, this is going to be um, a little bit higher than that, so uh, something to look at as far as uh, buying. But it is definitely worth the money. It's a nice kit. It gives you a lot of options. Um, it doesn't have the interior, but there's uh, nobody else out there putting out a Leopard currently, although there are some coming out that will have interiors. Uh, but this one does not have that at this point. Anyway, great model, great product. Um, I like it. I'm going to be building this down the road. Uh, I've got a lot of other things i got to get done first, but it's definitely in the uh, hopper as far as products to do. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. More videos on the way. You can also get me on Facebook at uh, Rick's 135th Scale Models. Email me if you want to. Please keep your comments. Uh, anything you want to talk about, any requests, any uh, ideas, thoughts. I, I look forward to anything. Um, take care, everybody. See you on the next one, and bye-bye.